Hi friends, welcome back on our YouTube channel. In today's lecture of classical mechanics, we will discuss about elastic one dimension collision of two particles. So, here we will discuss about collision of particles and especially elastic one dimension collision of two particles. Now, collision of particles. Now there are two types of collision, elastic collision and inelastic collision. The linear momentum remains conserved in both type of collision, but kinetic energy is conserved only in elastic collision, whereas in elastic collision, total energy remains constant, but kinetic energy does not remain constant. So first of all, perfectly elastic collision. In this type of collision, both kinetic energy and linear momentum remains constant and second type of collision is perfectly inelastic collision. In this type of collision, the bodies stick together or remain in contact with each other after the collision and in this type of collision, kinetic energy does not remain constant whereas linear momentum remains constant. So in these collisions, the linear momentum remains constant, but total kinetic energy does not remain constant. Now, elastic one dimension collision of two particles or head on collision of two particles. So, head on collision of two particles. Here we have a particle having mass m1 and this is another particle of mass m2 m1 is moving with velocity u1 and m2 is moving with velocity u2 both are moving in same direction also u1 is greater than u2 so this particle will collide to this particle so this is the case before collision Since u1 is greater than u2, so after some time, particle having mass m1 collide to particle of mass m2. And after collision, the particle of mass m1 move with velocity v1, whereas the particle of mass m2 move with velocity v2. So this is the case after collision. And after collision, the velocity of particle m2 that is v2 is greater than v1. If v1 is greater than v2 then again this particle will collide to this particle. So after collision v2 is greater than v1. Now from the law of conservation of linear momentum the total linear momentum before collision and total linear momentum after collision remain same. So, m1 u1 plus m2 u2 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2. This is the total linear momentum before collision and this is the total linear momentum after collision. Since all the particles are moving in same direction, so we can remove these vector sign. So, m1 u1 plus m2 u2 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2. Now we transfer this m1 v1 here and m2 u2 here. So on taking common m1 in these two quantity we get m1 into u1 minus v1 and on taking m2 common in these two quantity we get m2 into v2 minus u2. From the conservation of kinetic energy, kinetic energy is half mv square. So from the conservation of kinetic energy, the total kinetic energy before collision will be equal to the total kinetic energy after collision. So half m1 u1 square plus half m2 u2 square. This is the total kinetic energy before collision is equal to half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square. 
This is the total kinetic energy after collision. Now half half will be cancelled out, and we transfer m1 v1 square in this direction, and m2 u2 square here. So if we take m1 common in these two quantity, then m1 into u1 square minus v1 square in the same way. If we take m2 common in these two quantity, then m2 into v2 square minus u2 square. Now m1 into u1 minus v1 equal to m2 into v2 minus u2, and m1 into u1 square minus v1 square equal to m2 into v2 square minus u2 square. So if we divide this relation by this one, then m1 into u1 square minus v1 square divided by m1 into u1 minus v1 is equal to m2 into v2 square minus u2 square divided by m2 into v2 minus u2. Now m1 and m1 can be cancelled out, m2 and m2 can be cancelled out. If we open this bracket and this bracket by using a square minus b square formula, then u1 minus v1 into u1 plus v1 divided by u1 minus v1 is equal to v2 minus u2 into v2 plus u2 divided by v2 minus u2. Now u1 minus v1 and u1 minus v1 will be cancelled out. v2 minus u2 and v2 minus u2 also cancel out. So here we have u1 plus v1 equal to v2 plus u2. So u1 plus v1 equal to v2 minus u2 or u1 minus u2 is equal to minus v1 minus v2. This is the relative velocity of these two particles with which velocity both particles reaching towards each other and this is the velocity with which these two particles move apart from each other. It is clear from this formula that the magnitude of relative velocity before collision and after collision are same only their direction reverses because here we have negative sign. Thus the magnitude of the relative velocity of the particles remain constant in perfectly elastic collision but their direction reverses. Now we have m1 into u1 minus v1 is equal to m2 into v2 minus u2. So we transfer this m1 here to here. So u1 minus v1 is equal to m2 upon m1 v2 minus u2 and also we have u1 plus v1 equal to v2 plus u2. Now on adding these two equations, so if we add this equation and this equation then v1 and v1 will be cancelled out. So twice u1 is equal to and in right hand side we have m2 upon m1 into v2 and here v2. So if we take v2 common then 1 plus m2 upon m1 and also here we have minus m2 upon m1 into u2 and here u2. So if we take u2 common then in bracket 1 minus m2 upon m1. So twice u1 equal to 1 plus m2 upon m1 into v2 plus 1 minus m2 upon m1 into u2. Now if we take m1 LCM here so twice m1 u1 equal to m1 plus m2 into v2 plus m1 minus m2 into u2. Now we transfer m1 minus m2 into u2 from here to here. So m1 plus m2 into v2 is equal to twice m1 u1 plus m2 minus m1 into u2. On dividing this whole equation by m1 plus m2 we get v2 is equal to twice m1 upon m1 plus m2 into u1 plus m2 minus m1 upon m1 plus m2 into u2. 
Similarly, if we want to find the value of velocity of particle having mass m1 after collision, then we just replace 1 in 2 and 2 in 1 in this equation. So, this will be v1 is equal to twice m2 divided by m1 plus m2 into u2 plus m1 minus m2 upon m1 plus m2 into u1. So, we just replace 1 by 2 and 2 by 1 in this equation. So, we get this relation. So, v1 equal to m1 minus m2 upon m1 plus m2 into u1 plus twice m2 upon m1 plus m2 into u2. So, this is the velocity of particle having mass m1 after collision and this is the velocity of particle of mass m2 after collision. A special case is, since v1 equal to this one, v2 is this one, first special case is, when the colliding particles have the same mass, it means m1 equal to m2. So, if we put m1 equal to m2, then this will be 0 and here we have twice m upon twice m. So, 2m and 2m will be cancelled out. So, v1 equal to u2 and here this will be 0 and here twice m and twice m will be cancelled out. So, v2 equal to u1. So, v1 equal to u2 and v2 equal to u1. So, m1 equal to m2 and therefore, v1 equal to u2 and v2 equal to u1. It means, if two particles having same mass collide together, then after collision, their velocity interchanged. Means, second particle move with the velocity of first particle and first particle move with the velocity of second particle after collision. Second case, if the second particle is at rest before collision, so u2 equal to 0. So, we just put here u2 equal to 0 and also here u2 equal to 0. So, v1 equal to m1 minus m2 upon m1 plus m2 into u1 and v2 equal to twice m1 upon m1 plus m2 into u1. So, v1 is this one and v2 is this one. Third case, if the second particle is at rest before collision and both particles have the same mass. If both particles have the same mass, then v1 equal to u2 and v2 equal to u1. And since second particle is at rest before collision, so this is 0. So v1 equal to 0 and v2 equal to u1. So v1 equal to 0 and v2 equal to u1. It means if the two particles having same mass and second particle is at rest before collision, collide together, then after collision, first particle will be at rest and second particle move with the velocity of first particle. If the mass of second particle is very large and initially second particle is at rest. So this is the velocity of first particle and this is the velocity of second particle. Since second particle is at rest before collision, so this will be 0 and this will be 0. And here m2 is very much greater than m1 and u2 equal to 0. So these two quantities will be 0. Now m2 is very much greater than m1. It means m1 minus m2 will be equal to minus m2 and m1 plus m2 will be equal to m2. So v1 equal to minus u1 because this will be minus m2 and this will be m2. So m2 m2 will be cancelled out. So v1 equal to minus u1 and here twice m1 is very much less than in comparison to m1 plus m2. So this will be around 0. So v2 equal to 0. So v2 equal to 0. It means the second particle will not move after the collision or it will remain at rest also after collision, whereas first particle comes back with the same velocity. Now, next case, if the mass of first particle is very large and initially 
second particle is at rest so u2 equal to 0 and m2 is very much less than m1 so this will be 0 now m1 is very much greater than m2 so m1 minus m2 will be equal to m1 and m1 plus m2 will be equal to m1 so here we have m1 upon m1 so this will be 1 so v1 equal to u1 and here twice m1 upon m1 so m1 m1 will be cancelled out so v2 equal to twice u1 so v1 equal to u1 and v2 equal to twice u1 it means after collision first particle move with the same velocity whereas second particle move with double velocity of the velocity of particle having mass m1 so v1 equal to u1 and v2 equal to twice u1 now here we end our session in today's session we have discussed about elastic 1d collision of two particles so goodbye